Hey everybody, today we're going to do the U.S. Senate prediction for the month of August. And given how wild it's been over the past month, I didn't really want to make too many changes. Things are up in the air, there's still a bunch of primaries coming up, campaigns have yet to take shape, and a lot of these margins are going to be very borderline, so you might be just on the other side of a different rating. Previously, we saw Biden running well ahead of Senate Democrats. It's really hard to say if and to what extent that trend is going to continue with Harris on the ticket instead of Biden. And Republicans are looking to flip one seat for a 50 50 tie in the Senate. If Trump were able to win, then they would have control. If Harris wins, then Republicans would need to flip two seats. So let's get into the map. We're going to start by filling out the safe states, and these are expected to be over a 10 point margin or otherwise not competitive. First, we're going to start in arguably the bluest state. That's going to be Hawaii. Then we go up to the Northwest. We've got Washington with Maria Cantwell. Then in California, Adam Schiff is going to easily win over Steve Garvey. Then we continue west with a quick stop off in Minnesota. That's going to be Amy Klobuchar. Expected to win by more than 10 points. Then in the East Coast, Maine and Vermont have independents Angus King and Bernie Sanders. I don't think there's really any chance either of them are going to lose. Angus King's margin in Maine won't be extremely wide because he still has to face another Democrat and a Republican, but both of them are going to be safe blue. Then we've got New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island. All of those, it looks like Republicans have nothing going on. And the last state is going to be Delaware. Again, the GOP has a weak bench here, and it looks like Lisa Blunt Rochester is going to win that open seat. Now we can do the safe states for the Republicans. We'll start in the West. We've got Utah, Wyoming, then North Dakota, Nebraska, and the Nebraska Special. I get in the regular Nebraska race. Deb Fisher is facing independent candidate Dan Osborne. I think there's an outside chance they could get under 10, but for now, I would only expect Fisher to take a small hit. Then next door, we've got Josh Hawley in Missouri. In Indiana, it's going to be Jim Banks. South in Tennessee, Marsha Blackburn is going to face Gloria Johnson. Unless something crazy happens, I expect Johnson to win by at least 10. And then in Mississippi, Roger Wicker is going to defeat Ty Pinkins, and the last state is going to be West Virginia. This is going to be a flip and a pickup as Jim Justice wins this open seat formerly held by Joe Manchin. Now we can go down to the likely states, and these are going to be between 5 and 10 point margins or have an outside chance of being competitive. But the Democrats were going to get New Mexico out of the way. Incumbent Democrat Martin Heinrich could easily win this by 11, 12 or more points. In the blue wave of 18, in a three-way race, he got 54% of the vote. So I can see Nella Domenici for the GOP keeping Heinrich just under 10 points. We'll see what happens, but I'm going to put it at likely. Then we're going to go back to the East Coast. First in New Jersey, this is borderline likely safe after Bob Menendez decided he's going to drop out. It's an open seat. It's very likely to be Andy Kim winning it over Curtis Bashaw. So you could put this at safe, but I think there's just enough there to have enough confidence to put it down under 10 points, but it's probably only going to be about nine and a half. Then let's take a look at Maryland, and we've got Angela Alsobrooks facing Larry Hogan. This one I've had at likely, and I actually put it back to safe as I was making the video, but then I said maybe it should go back down to likely because Hogan is the strongest candidate by far. So this one is at about 9.9 .9 for me. Easily could be 12 or 13 points, but I am interested to see what Hogan does in the home stretch. So that's why I very reluctantly kept it at likely. Then in Virginia, we've got Tim Kaine taking down Hung Kao, probably also going to be by high single digits. But Kaine is the well-known incumbent, and Hung Kao is going to need a little bit of time to get his campaign in full swing. So that one is going to be likely. And finally, I've got Pencil Pennsylvania. This is Bob Casey over David McCormick. And I don't think it's overwhelming. I think this is the closest of all the likely states for the Dems, but I still think it's going to be about five and a half to six and a half points for Casey. I'd be stunned if he went down, and I would be pretty surprised if it got down to just one or two points. But it's always possible. I'm underestimating McCormick. We'll see what happens, but this one is going to be likely. Now we do the likely states for the GOP. I've got two of them. First is going to be Texas. This is Ted Cruz over Colin Allred. I don't think it's going to be overwhelming, nine or ten points. I think it's much closer to about five five to six. There's a very small chance that Cruz ends up going down in the end. I think he's very likely to at least win the state and also likely to improve on his narrow margin back in the blue wave of 2018. And the last likely state is going to be Florida. This is Rick Scott probably taking on Debbie Mukarsal Powell. For a long time I had this at Leans. It wasn't until a couple of months ago I finally bumped it up to likely. I do think Scott is not that strong. He is a durable incumbent who's won narrow races in the past, but he's way under Marco Rubio's potential. It's possible in the end Scott wins by nine, ten, or 11 points, but right now I think it's only about five and a half. So that's a win, but it's not super convincing. He's going to get it just over likely. Now we do the lean states. These are going to be under five points, but more than one point. Let's go through them one at a time. Let's start in the West in the silver state. That's Nevada. Jackie Rosen is the incumbent. I think she's favored to win over Republican Sam Brown. That's far from a guarantee Brown could win this thing in the end, but given her incumbency advantage and Brown needing some time to get going, for now it seems easy enough to give this to Rosen by a lean. Next door in Arizona, this is an open seat 
seat. It looks like Ruben Gallego is going to be favored here over to Kerry Lake. Again, it's not overwhelming, but Gallego is going to have the edge. Then in the Rust Belt, we've got Wisconsin. Democrat Tammy Baldwin is going for term number three. She's expected to face Eric Hovde, who ran previously for the Senate back in 2012. He was the runner-up in that primary, so here we are 12 years later, he's running again. He's going to face accusations of being out of touch and from out of state. I don't think the Republicans got a strong candidate in this race. It's always possible something weird happens. We did see Ron Johnson take down Russ Feingold in two straight elections, so I'm expecting Baldwin to win. I think it's a lot closer to likely than it is to tilt, so it's going to be a leans for Baldwin. And then next door, we've got Michigan. The expected nominees are Alyssa Slotkin for the Dems and Mike Rogers for the GOP. There's not a lot to say here. I think Slotkin is going to have the edge. It's not overwhelming, but she's going to get it by a lean rating. And then we've got two states left. These are going to be the closest margins. We'll start in Montana. This is Tim Sheehy against John Tester. Tester's a good fit. He's been durable. He's won in favorable environments in the past, but it is going to be tough to see Tester run potentially 15 or more points ahead of Harris. Maybe Sheehy isn't a top-tier candidate, but he does seem decent enough from what I've seen so far. I had Tester hanging on for a while up until my last prediction. I finally flipped it to Sheehy, and for now I'm going to hold that rating as a tilt for Sheehy. The last state is Ohio, and that's going to be Sherrod Brown taking on Bernie Marino. Brown is in a similar situation as Tester in Montana. He's got to win in a mostly red state and run well ahead of Kamala Harris. I think he's definitely going to run ahead of her, but I don't know if it could be by about 10 points or more. I'm still waiting to see if Marino is really going to break out or if he's going to fall flat and not connect with enough voters. Without Brown, this would be a very likely flip. I know it's going to be controversial, but for now, I'm going to hold my rating at a tilt for Brown. So the final map is 51 Republicans, 49 Democrats. If this Republicans flip West Virginia and Montana, they're extremely close to flipping Ohio. And then they've got some targets in Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Democrats don't really have much territory to expand. Their best bet is going to be Texas or Florida. So the national environment is going to be more important as we get closer and closer to the election. And again, a lot of these ratings are borderline lean likely or likely safe. We'll see what happens. But for now, this is the prediction as of early August. So let me know in the comments, how does your August Senate map look? Is it similar to my map or do you have four or five states different? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.